Hello guys, so we are now at Korea Blockchain Week and here with you Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram and our guest Anra Karjun, who is co-founder of Avail. It's a new data uh, availability layer which uh, combines uh, data availability and as well data availability sampling. And as well additionally, he is uh, co-founder of another layer one, uh, Polygon. Great to have you here, Arjun. Yep, thanks. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us about your background and how did you initially get into crypto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I entered the crypto uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I spent about 11 years in fintech, regulatory technology and so on. Um, I started uh, Polygon or Matic uh, network at, uh, back in 2017 with Sandeep and JD. Uh, and then, of course, we grew uh, Polygon um, to where it is right now. Uh, built a lot of the uh, stack at Polygon, including pl Plasma stack, the POS stack, uh, mm -hmm. using Infra. Also, um, was uh, involved in the acquisition of the ZK teams like Hermes, Zero, Maiden, and so on. Mm -hmm. And we have actually also built, uh, started building Av Avail, um, my current venture, uh, within Polygon back in 2020. And uh, after we were building this, like last year in 2023, we spun Avail out of Polygon. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's a separate independent uh, project. And I also left all the operational roles at uh, Polygon. Yeah, and you raised uh, $27 million in your seed round from the top funds like uh, Dragonfly, Founders Fund. Uh, so can you tell more how Avail is different? And I remember we met at Modular Summit by Celestia. So Celestia as well has its modular blockchain. So how are you different from them, from Eigenlayer, from other existing solutions? Yeah, yeah. so just a small correction. We actually ended, ended up raising a total of around uh, um, 75 million. Mm -hmm. So we also raised, uh, after the initial seed round, we also raised a Series A round of 43 million. Uh, so coming to a total of 75 million from, again, from the same uh, similar set of investors like Founders Fund, uh, Dragonfly and mm -hmm. uh, Cyber Fund. Um, uh, in general, like, uh, see, essentially, uh, to give an idea of what we are building really is, uh, so you have to look at the history of blockchains. Um, in general, the first generation of blockchains, um, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, mm -hmm. like Phantom, uh, BSC, Solana, for example, all of these are monolithic sort of uh, blockchains. Right? Mm -hmm. So you build a particular type of blockchain and then you, you're expecting all the world's transactions to be on one blockchain. Uh, and that's not a very scalable construct, um, uh, even on something like Solana. Mm -hmm. like you can already see, uh, you know, like uh, there, there's congestion on, on those networks. Uh, so what happened in 2020 is that uh, Ethereum uh, started um, uh, proposed what is called the roll-up centric roadmap and this is a like a modular way of scaling mm -hmm. very similar to how um, distributed systems on on the internet for example apps on the internet scale right like I mean if you kind of look at apps on the internet um, they they are not on all one big supercomputer mm -hmm. uh, they are all on different servers they are scaled independently based on demand that's how mostly how it works, right? Like, so if, if there's Amazon uh, and if there's a particularly busy day, Amazon will just add more servers to speak with the demand. Mm -hmm. uh, they will not invest in a big supercomputer, right? So we don't, we, ex we don't expect blockchains to be the same. Like we don't expect one blockchain powering the entire world's mm -hmm. uh, transactions. That's not going to happen. And so that's why, you know, if you look at uh, after 2020, the blockchain world uh, has been going through this transformation that now on top of Ethereum, you will see like an Arbitrum, like an Optimism, a Polygon, a CD, um, Starkware, uh, ZK Sync, for example, and so on, and many others. And so now you have these hundreds of chains on top of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So now you have this very modular sort of construction where there is this base layer one, and then there are these layer two solutions on top, mm -hmm. right? And there is, um, you know, you can add as many chains as possible as and when transaction demand increases. Uh, so in general, like in 2020, we thought um, like Ethereum was, of course, you know, like it's a great blockchain with tremendous TVL, for example, but it was, you know, you have to remember it was born in uh, 2014 uh, in the when, you know, like monolithic blockchains mm -hmm. were made monolithically. 
um, and this newer approach requires upgrades. So of course, Ethereum has also been doing upgrades. Like uh, they release the beacon chain, for example, for mm -hmm. data availability and so on, uh, bifurcating this. But in general, you need a lot of specialized infrastructure uh, to enable this multi-chain future. So Avail really is is essentially you know like uh, infrastructure built from the ground up. Mm -hmm. for enabling this multi-chain uh, infrastructure, not only for scaling, but also ensuring these different multiple chains are connected to each other. Mm -hmm. Users don't have to deal with this fragmentation um, of so many chains. Uh, developers don't have to deploy on multiple chains, right? Like the end goal that we want to get to is user, um, developers deploy on one chain and users on other chains can seamlessly access this. Mm -hmm. So. So, so you need specialized infra for this, and that is why we are, um, you know, like building a wheel. Uh, yeah, and how is it different from Celeste or from Icon Layer? Yeah, so I think uh, blockchains like uh, Celestia and Eigen, like especially Eigen DA, for example, like they focus on only one part of the uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Right, like so, data availability in general is, is meant to scale um, these blockchains, roll-up blockchains. Right? Mm -hmm. like, but that is only half the solution. Like um, in general, like if you see at Ethereum, Ethereum provides uh, this service, the data availability service uh, mm -hmm. to all of these rollups. And, uh, but then you have these hundreds of chains with no one talking to each other. Um, and so there's immense fragmentation uh, there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you just provide like one of these services, um, like, uh, for scaling, for example, you still end up with the same problems. So you have to uh, do much, much better. Like you, not mm -hmm. only scaling, you also you have to, you know, like have built-in interoperability, mm -hmm. uh, more better crypto economic security, and so on. And so we build like uh, the entire stack, not only mm -hmm. one part of the stack. And you as well build in a well nexus to mm -hmm. allow blockchains to uh, interact with each other. Uh, yes. So can you tell more on that? Yeah, yeah. So if you kind of look at, uh, you know, how roll-up interoperability or roll-up blockchain interoperability works in general. Uh, uh, so you, it's a little different from L1, layer one to layer one interoperability. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, roll-up interoperability, uh, how we approach this is like our DA layer is a, you know, has this shared view of all the roll-up transactions uh, mm -hmm. on top. And in general, what we do is this uh, ZK proof aggregation. Uh, so that you know like we've taken proofs from each of these rollups aggregated into one single proof combine it with these the ordered view of transactions and mm -hmm. then enable uh, these chains to interact with each other so essentially um, you can see that it's a very permissionless way of connecting these uh, mm -hmm. uh, rollups together and you have as well you launched uh, recently your own token as well so yeah. can you tell more about it and how is it used within your ecosystem yeah, yeah, as I said, right, like, so this is, we are building this vertical stack. So there mm -hmm. is, um, you know, like a data availability um, layer that we just launched on mainnet uh, a month uh, so ago. Um, then we have on top of this Nexus, which is the interoperability. Mm -hmm. So it um, enables, um, you know, like rollups to talk to each other. Uh, we also have this um, you know, feature in the roadmap later, which focuses on having uh, decentralized sequencing aux uh, infra like mm -hmm. for auctions and such and so the token really plays a role in each of these um, uh, components mm -hmm. so at the base layer it will be used for staking it will be used for as paying for fees for data mm -hmm. availability at the nexus layer it is used for you know like sequencer fees for example but also for bridging fees mm -hmm. so it's like used as a um, um, uh, token across the stack. Mm -hmm. And are you targeting any specific use cases uh, with your solution? So we build, um, yeah, you know, credibly neutral infra. So in general, like we don't have um, any favorites. Like, but some of the m major use cases uh, that chains are coming up with is social, for example, mm -hmm. uh, DeFi, uh, gaming, um, a little bit of uh, logistics as well. Um, payments, um, you know, like uh, programmable payments, for mm -hmm. example, um, RWA. So, like, we are seeing chains from across all these categories come. Mm -hmm. um, we also 
very bullish on you know like uh, these newer type of blockchains as well like more a- application specific mm-hmm. so these are not like evm or uh, like general purpose blockchains mm-hmm. these are more uh, you can think of uh, taking a smart contract and deploying it as a roll up for example so these there are these uh, roll up stacks such as stacker sovereign mm-hmm. uh, that are doing great work there and so we are also working with them to enable applications that we haven't seen yet in blockchain and are there already projects building on avail and yeah, yeah. what are the most uh, exciting ones for you yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean uh, there are a bunch of uh, projects uh, that are already kind of live on testnet for example uh, mm-hmm. soon, soon coming on mainnet we also have an important announcement uh, coming in uh, at uh, token 2049 singapore uh, uh, where you know like we'll announce like a like a bigger uh, chain uh, so essentially yeah lots of uh, updates coming Uh, what challenges do you see currently i think uh, essentially we are uh, somewhere in the middle of uh, this transition from a monolithic architecture to a modular architecture and so mm-hmm. some of the tooling that is required for developers for users uh, that is uh, still in flux still being developed mm-hmm. uh, so i think the it's it's really not a challenge it's just that uh, we have to navigate this time mm-hmm. uh, until we have this infra ready we also also i think we also need to move beyond the crypto um, like twitter bubble uh, that we sometimes get into like <laughs> speaking to actual um, you know like um, customers outside of crypto mm-hmm. uh, focusing on what they require like we've been for, you know like i've been spending a lot of time um, talking to various uh, stakeholders outside of, of the mm-hmm. crypto system of course we do the crypto ecosystem as well but you know like more and more doing this outside as well and we're getting a lot of insights mm-hmm. so a lot of um, uh, enterprises and governments for example that were uh, you know like previously in 2017 2020 looking at very private blockchain sort of mm-hmm. things now they've getting getting uh, introduced to the roll up zk roll ups um, or optimistic roll ups uh, mm-hmm. kind of construct uh which uh, which they feel comfortable with so um so we are seeing huge advances there so some of the challenges there also is you know kind of getting like basically getting a newer set of developers mm-hmm. newer set of uh, projects newer set of stakeholders to also use uh, blockchain infra um i think we are also as a industry we are in this uh, <laughs> loop where we build this fantastic systems and we expect users to come to this ecosystem on mm-hmm. ramp and come to these ecosystems and you know like in general and so this is like we are we are all trying to create like distribution from scratch mm-hmm. um i think uh, one approach that we are trying is uh, can we take the technology to where uh, to where the distribution is mm mm-hmm. uh, like for example people are very excited about let's say telegram uh, or ton for example mm-hmm. because uh, that's where um the blockchain technology is being um uh, brought to the users like <laughs> rather than asking yeah. users to come here and so we will see more examples where uh, so telegram is one example but there are far there will be much more examples like where we will take the blockchain technology to the users rather than mm-hmm. you know like uh, asking them to come here yeah so it's important and how do you see the current state of crypto market uh, with some kind of prices going down <laughs> yeah i think it's a natural uh, cycle the micro environment is also uh, weak uh, mm-hmm. there's also you know like uh, globally there's there's a bunch of issues i mean you know like there's war uh, there's you know like weakness in the financial markets mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know like uh, in, in the japanese markets for example and so on and so it's a natural function like we've been here like i've been here 7 years uh, in the industry and it always goes up and down mm-hmm. and so you have to kind of navigate that you have to go through um the downs or the navigate the bear market to um you know when better times come so i think yeah. it's all mm-hmm. like you have to have a long term view like mm-hmm. you, uh, like i don't really look at price daily yeah, yeah and besides uh, avail and polygon what does alt coins do you have in your portfolio so actually i'm i'm to be very frank i'm not actually a, a big uh, trader um, mm-hmm. like i don't do too much trading at all Uh, at the most i hold some btc some eth uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's that's also i've been holding for a long time 
Do you uh, hold any other layer one, layer two uh, tokens? Um, no, no, no. I do do some small angel investments uh, mm -hmm. for projects that I really like. Uh, so, like small, small investments there. What But type of projects are interesting for you? Generally, um, so this is like um, roll up stack tooling. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, sequencer. Uh, roll up sequencer uh, tooling for example wallets chain abstraction mm -hmm. um, uh, intent frameworks so essentially infrastructure around like i genuinely believe that um, blockchains are uh, will become more and more the future of blockchains is going to be modular uh, mm -hmm. and so you need tools to enable all of this so we uh, so i put in some sometimes i put in small investments there Nice. And in your opinion, how long will this bull market last? And do you have any investment strategy when the people need to fix the price? I think, see, profit? essentially, uh, again, see, of course, I'm not an investment expert. Uh, but, you know, like I was seeing this video uh, from someone who I like uh, in general. And so they were, uh, so that person was charting out the, uh, the, the, the token price for Bitcoin over, um, like from 20, 2009 to 20, uh, 24 mm -hmm. and in general like uh, if you see if you kind of don't do trade and you just hold for example you will always you know you are always being um, in a good position mm -hmm. uh, you know, profit for example so I think like uh, like most uh, short term trading is a little I don't do it like I don't understand it mm -hmm. uh, so my strategy is to hold uh, if any uh, so Um, but in general, the most, the biggest investment I have in my, like, is just from my own projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes it's good to fix your profit in one cycle and then uh, to buy back in the next cycle. Yeah, I mean, see, some, uh, may, maybe, maybe. I am, so, to be very frank, I'm not a trader, so I, mm -hmm. uh, so I stay away from that. <laughs> and can you share some upcoming plans for a while? Yeah, so we've we already launched like the Avail DA mainnet uh, last month or so, and uh, so now we have uh, kind of adopt, uh, getting more and more chains on Avail mm -hmm. DA. Uh, so some of these announcements are coming up soon, but we've been doubling down on um, releasing Nexus, which is our uh, roll-up interoperability mm -hmm. component uh, that we want to release pretty soon. Great. So good luck with your developments, and thank you for the interview. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for having me.